Hey guys, uh, welcome back to the channel. I have another Marine ECM, this time testing a 5.0 GXI J2008 uh, EGC module. This is coming from Indiana. Scott, this is your computer. Um, he was contacting me because he wants to get this boat uh, going before he goes to vacation. And he was actually about to buy one of my computers that I have ready to go. And, well, at the end, he decided to please just get this one, test, see if it can be repaired before I spend the money on buying another module. So we have the module here. All right, so I'm going to power up, uh, which is the main power relay, and a uh, few pump on. So let's see. Um, okay. I see the mail, but I don't see neither one of those. Let's try that again. Yeah, I see that, but I don't see that order. All right, let's see if we have a Fible reference. And we do. All right, let's select the setup for this one. is an EGC serial connector. He sent me a few pictures. What I can see his connector, actually, I can show you that here. Because I want to be showing any information of the customer. Well, he sent me a picture to understand which motor I got the engine serial and everything which I'm going to cover so we don't see much on his uh, this is to see that this is indeed his same computer uh, and we can see that right there actually that should be kind of like backwards but uh, since this power up I cannot show you that but that's his computer all right so uh, what else I was going to show oh the connector so I asked him, you know, do you know if it is this? Because he was not sure. It's a 2008, so it could be either or. So I asked him to send me a, a few pictures of the connectors. And if he had this round connector, that's a serial connector for uh, this EGC. Otherwise, it's a different one. It's a flat one for the newer ones. As far as concerns, let me put this in here. I'm going to comment down because I think I might have his email in here. Let me just make sure I don't. Um, let me see if I can make this a little smaller. Yeah, that's not going to change that. I'm trying to cover his information so you guys can give me one second because I can then just make this like that because I don't want to show his information like that is covered. Let's say I forgot to tell you about the one I have currently. The ball fails to turn over right now. It was turning over and running at times. The module does not smell burnt. It is one of the first things I checked. The dash lights up and a couple of the gauges come, come up. The beeping sound, the sound when you turn the key to start will not even come on. Okay, so we can see that in here. All the relays and fuses are good in the boat. Use a multimeter to check. All I could, we replace the starter switch, check the starter, nothing else I know to do. All right, so that's his uh, concerns. President of Jane will be lost, yes. All right, so I'm just trying to show you my conversations with him before he sent a computer. All right, so when I have that, I can select this because, you know, the same EGC, I can have this type of connector right here, the 94029 or the 23, which is for the CAN bus. When it's not like that, it's a serial connector. Again, the 94024, and that is the one we have, all right? So we select that, all right? It is, it is communicating, all right? So let's get into here. Okay, I can see uh, a retrieve read, codes. Let's see what we got. Parameter pressure, I don't have that here. So that is, that is normal. Uh, sender, yes, I have the stream sender and all those disconnected on purpose. I can actually connect them and see if, um, I mean, if it's everything normal due to his concern, I can actually not do the, those yet because I'm, I'm an expert on these computers. So it's called you're in the best hands possible for this. But yeah, the reason I leave those disconnected is to check the logic of the computer. So far, that is normal. Uh, this I open or shorter one, um, this is because I'm using this. So the computer doesn't like the resistance, but all I need to see is movement on the IAC. And I always check. I do have the original IAC for this, so that's not a problem. But uh, again, my test. 
Uh, buzzer is open, water temperature gauge driver, yes, that is not connected, oil pressure gauge, that is not connected. So those are completely normal. All right, so uh, let's see if it runs. I don't like that, no fuel pump in there. That should be the Hertz and needs to run and it's not running. All right, so it's good. I can definitely reproduce your concern. Um, I honestly, uh, the most, of, the majority of the times, what I see a module doing this ends up being the microprocessor, and it's nothing we can do. These computers, I don't know if it's vibration or what it is that makes them go this way. And we can see the IAC trying to move. The computer is seeing RPM, you see. And this is the thing, you know, the computer is seeing RPM, is seeing everything, but it's not, it's not reacting. So this is like the microprocessor inside, either it gets disorder, it gets damage. Uh, it's hard to know, hard to understand why, it's, why this happened. It could be battery voltage, battery uh, voltage spikes. And that is very important when you have a boat like this, don't ever try to charge the battery when it's connected to the boat. Uh, unless you have a battery maintainer for programming, which is a very clean DC voltage, uh, then you can, but if you're just using a regular battery charger, the problem with those is they, they let AC go through. These computers are not meant to receive any AC signal, so they're not protected for that kind of stuff. So if you try to connect the charger to keep, you know, to charge the, the, the battery with the battery connected in the boat, that can completely damage your uh, computer. Same thing is low voltages. When you have low voltages, those below seven volts, and so when you crank, if you have a very low voltage and you try to crank your boat, your engine, and that voltage goes even below that, it can corrupt uh, software and it can damage components inside, right? So I'm just trying to put that out there because this is what I have seen, and I'm sorry, but I cannot even take this computer as a core. Uh, this is uh, what I will consider a non-repairable computer. And I believe me, I have repaired probably, I would say just EGC modules, maybe 1,200 of them. And I know exactly what I'm doing. I have mapped out 100% these computers and I know them good. All right, so nothing I can do with this one. It's not running with CRPM, nothing I can do. All right, so I have one, my computer right here. So, and you'll see, it has this ready to go. I always stamp it, you know, fully tested and ready to go. This is a 5.0, same exact module. So yours, as you can see, is a little corroded outside. That I mean, means absolutely nothing. Uh, mine is not. So, but um, let me swap this one over. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to keep the video still going. So I'm going to turn the RPMs, you know, the cam and crank sensor signals off turn this completely off because I can actually swap this computer without, uh, you know, with one hand, the way I make these connectors. Uh, so I can just get your computer to cut out of the way, a little wiring that I need to do. So let me just move this in here so I don't smash my little wires in here. All right, so let's put this one, hopefully I got it with the right orientation, which I think I do. No, it's the other way. So I gotta flip this over like this because this has a round and a flat. So connector can only go one way, connect it to back to the, you know, to the harness. All right, so let's uh, power up. All right, main power relay, fuel pump. It should prime, it should go off, and it did. So that is completely normal. Uh, let's reconnect. That I can now see uh, okay we have his retrieving fault codes which is you know normal nothing is uh running uh let's check the firewall reference i know this computer is working 100 percent, so that's not a problem uh let me this is again twin sender on all those that are not connected but actually these are your faults so let me erase this fault because i didn't reestablish let me let me start from scratch because that's how, what i should have done is reselect here reconnect to the computer because i was actually reading what it was before there as far as codes right so these are the codes that are open in here so the trim sender 
the valves are open and the barometric pressure low. So that is completely normal with the engine not running. Let's check the system information. So this is a 326 2007 ECM, same as yours. I have that, uh, and I can show you actually here. Let me get the history here so you can see that I think it's almost the same month. Let me just make sure. No, oh no, actually, yours is from September 6, 2007. This is from 3, 2007, so 3, 326, and it's a 5.0. So this is exactly perfect. So this is a, a 5.0 computer as well. All right, so let's let's run it. This has a little more hours. This is a used repair computer. So in these calibrations, I cannot change anything. So the hours that you see here are the hours that you're gonna have to just leave with the boat. Uh, these computers are impossible to get new and there is no tool that I can get to calibrate or re, um, yeah, we calibrate these computers. So that's the only thing. They, uh, what I would recommend you to do is um, I will uh, in invoice note the hours that you have in your computer because looking at your hours are really low. Let's see if I still have it open in here. Yes, I do. Uh, hours, 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 hours. Let me see. 186.32, at least on that computer, you got only 186.32 hours. So I will state on the invoice, if you end up purchasing my computer, that there is a, this discrepancy or difference on the hours that is only because the calibration, you replace the computer and the donor computer had these hours difference. So the real actual hours of the boat will be 186.32, and that is completely legal okay all right so just to put that out there as well because you know it's it's good i mean somebody comes and say you know it's not not that it's 600 is a lot of hours on any boat i mean especially in a 2008 but if you have a boat that only has 180 something hours it's a very difference you know very very different all right so let's let's run this up and we can see immediately injection coils and we can see all the injection in the seconds and we can see that in the screen i have the oscilloscope ready to go on the right side so we have blue is injector number two and red is injector number six and i have one of the coils because these are well actually this is a one est signal sorry this is a one est signal because it's a 50 so it's a one est signal so that's what we hear we see there is the est signal to run you know to get to the distributor and then spark plugs but all is running good we got a 3.6 milliseconds injection i'm going to increase the rpms to let's say you know 3000 or so i don't like to go too crazy when i'm doing tests unless it's something that i need to test uh, i know this computer is running good i'm going to change the throttle accordingly and so is the map sensor and we can see that all the injectors are reading really nice and steady and everything is working as it's supposed to. All right, so Scott um, and all of you that are watching the video, this is what I do. This is what I try to, you know, show. I have run multiple tests and I, like I said, I'm an expert. I just don't do a recommendation. I have repaired multiple of these units, injectors, fuel pumps, etc. I can I can fix that. But when you have a computer of this one that has absolutely no response, no fuel pump, the fellow, the first thing that I noticed there was no main power and no fuel pump, that is a red flag immediately. And that's exactly what you were experiencing. And I can just throw out there for yourself, Scott, and for everybody. If you have one of these computers and one of these boats, and it's starting to be hard to start, stop it right there and send that over to me. I might be able to help you then, but not when it's already too late. All right, guys, thank you so much for visiting the channel. Don't forget to subscribe. See you next time. Bye-bye.